So I'm not here really to show a, a thing that you would want to use for yourself. Instead, uh, always my intention here is to show something that kind of inspires you to make your own things. And so one problem that I have a lot of the time is that there's some data somewhere that will help me to understand something in the world. And I want to interrogate that data. Maybe I grab a little bit from this web page over here or from this file over there. So I, rather than make this potentially really dull by showing you the kinds of data I'm interested in, instead I'm going to use some generators to generate random rubbish data here. So we're going to use a control U, control X, control E to paste in the result of this piece of closure code here, right? So we'll get a big blob of numbers. And then I'm going to select those numbers and I'm going to run a little function called giraffe. And when I do, I get the sample normal distribution in a little graph in a window. This is pleasant, right? So why do I want it there? Well, this is using Emacs' built-in SVG display, and the thing that it called out to is a program that I wrote in ClojureScript that makes these graphs uh, based on passing it some data through standard in. And then I have an SVG that I can save and I can publish to the web, and it scales, and it's vector, and it looks nice, and all that kind of thing. And the code to do this is about 15 lines on the ELISP side and about a page and a half on the closure script side. And so I can do something like the sample normal there. I can do something like this. I'm just going to give you the sign function. Pretty dull, but you know, if you need the sign function for some reason, there it is. You can do cosine. And if you want, you can do both in one, oops, in one graph by just combining two different functions into the second half. So we'll do that, draft, and you get two functions on the same plot. So the reason for all this isn't to say that you should go and get yourself a copy of draft and you should plot random data that you find into these, uh, these cute little SVG drawings. It's that if there's some little thing that you want it to do, you can just make it do it, whatever it is, because Emacs is not so much a text editor as an environment in which you can build whatever workflow you want. So for example, the thing we just saw with uh, Synesthetic, having a separate window running in a separate program that's trying to look for a file and yada, yada, yada. You could just write 15 lines of ELISP and automatically pipe whatever image you're looking at in one image, uh, image view buffer in Emacs through that and bring it up in a second one and see what you're doing as you go that way. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Just encouraging people to build their own, build their own workflows. Any questions? Sure, yeah. <clears throat> There's giraffe. How are you running the closure scripts? Uh, well, let's go look at the uh, so slash bin giraffe. Draft because it sounds like graph. I'm using Node to run some compiled JavaScript that came from some closure script, right? Yes, you're compiling it separately. Yeah, I'm using line for this one, yeah, because it doesn't actually change that often. And if I'm working on it at the time, I use uh, Clojus Auto Build with line, and as I change it, I get the new behavior automatically. And then once I'm happy with it, I stop Auto Build. And the, uh, the actual closure script code is also. Itsy bitsy teensy weensy. So what is it all? It's 79 lines all told. This is the code that produces the bar chart. And I'm using some of my friend Karsten's libraries, the Jam libraries. I strongly recommend these if you're doing any coding in Clojure or Clojure script that involves uh, geometry manipulation and mathematics is they, they work exactly the same way in Clojure and Clojure Script. So I can build a little prototype and look at the output in the browser, and then I can move it on to a single machine, or I can do it in parallel on some machine with 120 CPUs over on AWS, and it's all the same code at every step. It's really a really handy thing to have around. And it just spits out, to standard out a little bit of SVG, and there it goes. That's it. Somebody used to this one, how Unix integrates with sometimes. How to get started if somebody wants to make a game for them? Or is there a suggestion for somebody to get into this? Well, in this particular case, 
I'm using some underlying gear that's been in Emacs forever uh, that allows you to call shell commands on regions. So if you're accustomed to writing programs in any other language that can take standard in and standard out, you can use them to filter anything that you can select in Emacs. And uh, the shell command on region, which you can, you can do interactively, uh, like I'll go back to my number example here. If I'm here and I, I want to send this and I don't have giraffe defined as a function, I would just hit alt pipe and then it gives me the option to type in what command I want to do. And so I can type giraffe. And then I get back this SVG, but it's not as nice because it's an SVG, it's not an image mode, so I can't actually see what's in there. So I can switch to image mode and see it, right? So if you want to get started, you can start with taking a command like that that you can use interactively and use it to sort of prototype some possible things you might want to do, maybe write a script in whatever your favorite scripting language is and pipe things through it. And then once you're kind of confident that it's doing what you want it to do, then you can write a little bit of scaffolding around it, assign it to a key and have it forever. So that's, that's how I'd recommend starting that. Hmm. Anything else? Told you it was a really small, really small lightning talk.